Bienvenue, cher Didier. Je suis heureux que tu sois ici pour présenter ton nouveau livre. Um, keine Angst, wir sprechen nicht Französisch. Herzlich willkommen, meine lieben Damen und Herren. Ich bin Tanja Martini, ich bin Redakteurin für das Sachbuch der Taz. Und ich freue mich, Sie hier im Taz-Studio auf der Leipziger Buchmesse so zahlreich begrüßen zu dürfen. Keine Überraschung, wenn Didier Iribon da ist, kommen alle. Ähm, wir switchen jetzt ins Englische, weil mein Französisch mittlerweile zu schlecht ist und ihr es ganz sicher auch, wie ich annehme. Ähm, die wenigsten von Ihnen werden fließend Französisch sprechen. Deshalb versuchen wir uns auf Englisch zu ähm, unterhalten. Doch bitte erstmal einen Applaus für Didier Iribon. Didier, tu, tu ne parles toujours pas allemand, même si tu es souvent en Allemagne. Hein? Uh, tu rigoles, tu uh, rigoles. I, I, I'm ashamed, but I don't speak German. And I spend half of my, for 10 years now, I have been speaking spending half of my time in yes. Germany, but uh, yes. your language is too difficult. Like, I, and I'm too old to, to, to start learning such a difficult language. So it I'm, is, I'm it sorry. is difficult, yeah, yes. Yeah. Euh, J'ai dit quelques mots en allemand, mais yeah. après, je tourne à vous. Euh, alors, Didier Eribon muss ich Ihnen nicht vorstellen. Er ist mit seinem Buch Rucain nach Reims in Deutschland bekannt geworden. Das Buch über die Klassengewalt in der kapitalistischen Gesellschaft und die Frage, warum die ähm, Arbeiterklasse ähm, zunächst äh, viele Jahre äh, kommunistisch gewählt hat und dann äh, sozusagen im rechten Spektrum gelandet ist. Ähm, sein neues Buch, eine Arbeiterin leben, altern und sterben, handelt von Didiers Mutter die als Arbeiterin und, und, und unterdrückte Frau ein Leben voller Entbehrungen geführt hat und schließlich im Altenheim gestorben ist. Rivon klagt, Didier klagt darin den Umgang mit alten Menschen und die Zustände in den Altenheimen an. Es ist wie seine anderen Bücher eine Analyse der ähm, strukturellen gesellschaftlichen Gewalt. Äh, wir duzen uns, weil wir haben schon, ich weiß nicht, uh, we did about five, six events together, so that's why I call you Didier, but yeah. So, nice to have you here. Why I call you Daniel? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, that's nice. Didier, your mother died at the age of 87, seven weeks after you delivered her to the old people's home. In Return to Reims, you describe how you didn't want to be your parents' son, because on the one hand, um, there was your class shame, and on the other, because of their racism and homophobia. But now, you have presented a largely tender, largement tendre book about your mother, When and why did you return to here and get involved with her again? Uh, you know, when I left my family when I was 20 years old and I left Reims to go to live uh, in Paris. And um, then when my father died uh, decades afterwards, um, I, I got back to Reims to see my mother. And um, it was the beginning of a new uh, relation uh, with her. Uh, not an easy one, because uh, when you return to what you left, you, uh, uh, you are reminded of the reasons why you wanted to leave. And uh, for example, my mother's uh, 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 racism, which was for me something uh, unbearable, and uh, it was impossible to have a discussion with her without uh, um, hearing her um, um, uh, slur, uh, insult against uh, uh, migrants, black people, uh, um, Arabs, and so. And it was a, f a kind of obsession in a, uh, in a. Uh, um, daily uh, daily talks and so 
is a tender relation, tender return to Reims? Yes, but I, um, I was asked in, 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 in France, how would, would you describe the, the, the feeling you had for your mother? Uh, and I don't, I, I don't know what, what, which name I, I can use, which word, which word I can use to describe this. It's not love. It's not tenderness. It's maybe compassion for that uh, uh, aging woman, uh, unable to walk and uh, uh, isolated in an apartment. And so it's compassion and also gratitude. Because if I left Reims when I was 20 years old, it's because I went to the university. And if I went to the university, it's because, uh, thanks to my mother, who was working in a, in a factory, uh, eight uh, hours uh, uh, long every day, in order to allow me to go to an amphitheater to listen someone uh, talking about Plato or Aristotle. And, and when I, I, I realized that, I, I, I have to to be to be grateful to her, and so the gratitude would be the the, the best uh, word to describe this this feeling. And uh, but as, as I uh, say, uh, write in this book, uh, this gratitude was also t uh, tempered by uh, my uh, exasperation uh, about, uh, as I s just said, uh, r racism. And once I told her. Maman, please don't say such thing. You know that I don't like that. And she told me, because she was a strong woman with a lot of energy, I'm at home. It's my home here. You will not tell me what I have to say, what I can say or not. If you don't like it, it uh, I say, what uh, you will not uh, tell me orders, uh, give me orders. And uh, so I say what I, I want to say. And I was wondering, what I am doing here? And uh, with someone I would not uh, even say hello to, uh, had uh, she not been my mother. And uh, this is a kind of complexity I try to, to, to put in that book. Uh, I hope I succeeded in, in, in the, this uh, uh, picture, the portrait of my mother. You have three other brothers, and you tell in the book how she, how she talked with you about her sexuality. Do you think you have been her... Um, did she trust you most, more than your brothers? Well, when, when I started to, to see her again, once she, she told me, I have a question to ask you. Uh, yes. Uh, do you think you, you're a philosopher, so... Maybe you know if someone as old as I am can be in love. Uh, oh yes, we can be in love. Uh, uh, there is no age to, to, to be in love. You, of course, you can be in love at your age. Uh, ah, yes, I was wondering, are you sure? Yeah. Uh, are you in love? I say, mm, uh, yes or no? <laughs> yes. So, and who is the man? Because I assume it is a man. It's, it's a man. Uh, with the man you are in love with, and she started talking to me about that man. She was crazy about him. Uh, it, 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 she, she, was, uh, she was obsessed by him. And she was more than 80 years old, and she has been unhappy with my father uh, during all her life. Um, she married my father when she was... Uh, uh, 20, um, and she, my father died when she was, uh, um, I would say, uh, uh, 70, she, she, she had been uh, 75, she has been living with someone she did hate during 55 years, and this is, uh, and I, I'm trying to reflect on what is marriage uh, in, in working class uh, uh, milieu, she, she, and when my father died, she met this, this man in, uh, in the neighborhood where she lived, and she felt in love, madly in love with him. And so she, she I, I told her, don't, what do you think I, 
I will do, I have to do, to, don't ask me my, my advice, my, my opinion about that, it's your life, it's not mine. So the, the, the important question, are you happy? Yes, so go no, on. Go ahead. And, and she told me, but don't tell your brothers, they would not like it at all. And Geoffroy, my partner, when I told him this story, told me, of course, she asked her gay son because she knows very well that the gay son, okay, go ahead, if you're happy, it's okay, do, do whatever you want. And, so, and she did. She, she, it, it was not really a, a question. She was not asking me uh, an authorization. She, she would have uh, done what she wanted to do, but it, she wanted to, to, to have my... Okay, do it. And, and my, my brothers did learn about that, and they were infuriated, sending me messages. Uh, she is 80 years old. Well, uh, you, what, you want her to, to start a relation at what age? Uh, Dad uh, is younger than uh, her. Oh, wonderful, because uh, she is 80 years old. It's better for her that he is younger. So, uh, insane message from my brother. And it's exactly, I quote this text, the, 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 novelas by, uh, the novela by Bertolt Brecht, La Vieille Dame Indigne. I don't know the, the title in German. The, the, the old, the indignant old woman, <coughs> the be beautiful short novella by Brecht, where after the death of her husband, uh, a woman who has been um, unhappy all her life starts a relation with uh, s uh, someone in a tavern, and, uh, and <coughs> her children are infuriated and want to send her to, to see a doctor, except one, we say, oh, she is happy. Uh, le, le, let her live the life, the life she wants to live. So, it's it 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 was for me something wonderful to tell, that because um, a woman can can feel. When my father died, I, I must say she would not have said that in that word, but it is what she felt. She felt liberated. And uh, it was the beginning of a freedom she never experienced before. And uh, this experience was also uh, uh, an affective, uh, romantic, sexual, I don't know. Uh, she did not give me the details, but I hope so for her. And uh, I was very happy for her that she... she uh, but. I met this man she was in love with, and uh, I was in, in my mother's apartment when the, this man uh, uh, entered. <coughs> my mother was watching TV, and uh, this man said, what we need now is a new Hitler. Uh, uh, my God, <laughs> what can I, what will I say, what can I? So I didn't want to start an argument with him. It, it, it was a kind of provocation. It, uh, I felt uh, uh, appalled by this. And I did not say anything. And, uh, but I was very happy that my mother had a love affair. But I was disgusted by the, 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 what kind the, of man the, the, the man yeah. <laughs> with, yeah. with whom she had this love affair. So all, all the, once, once again, um, the, things are not white and black, since things are very complicated, situations are complicated. And for me, it was very, very complicated to, to say hello again to this man who, who, who votes for the National Front, who is a fascist, who is, uh, he, was, he, was a, he was a worker, he was a communist worker, and, uh, and this is exactly what I described in Recœur Narins. Oui. Um. You also describe um, how you have to bring your mother to the old people's home. And she only lived seven, about seven weeks there, and then she died. Um, she stopped eating, I think. Do you think this was kind of a suicide, and maybe she died because, of, because she was lovesick? There, there are several reasons. One of the main reasons 
uh, of um, is the situation of the nursing home in France, but also in Great Britain, and I, I would assume in Germany, or everywhere in, in the world, that um, people are put there. You don't, the society don't see them anymore, don't take care of it. They, they are take, taken care of, but uh, um, the staff is insufficient. My mother was leaving, uh, uh, messages on my cell phone saying I'm not happy or it's very uh, the, the situation is very harsh and and so uh, I realized that there was uh, something um, which was happening there I realized it uh, too too late I, 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 I was late in realizing it and she was unhappy and when I um, I uh, my mother I'm not allowed to to take a shower, so I called the doctor at the nursing home. Thing. My mother told me, "Oh no, it's not. She's not allowed to. But to take her to the shower, I um, I need to nurse aid two men, and I don't have staff enough to do that every day. So it's uh, I can do that only once once a week." And for my mother, it, it was in, impossible, and so many examples. So the nursing room, uh, and um, um, the state is sparing money on nursing room because it costs a lot, of course. Uh, and they are sparing money. And um, the, it's the dismantlement of the public sector by uh, the neoliberal agenda. Uh, we have it in France, thanks to Mr. Macron. We have it in, you have it in Germany, thanks to Mr. Schroeder and, and, and the, 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 all the ones who, who came after, after him, including, including Olaf Scholz, who said that one of his references is uh, Ricoeur Narens. I'm afraid he did not read it uh, too, too carefully enough uh, because he should have uh, paid attention to what I, I wrote about this, the kind of policy he is uh, enforcing now. And so when it is the public sector, there is no money from the state. When it is the private sector, this is a law of profit. Obscene, obscene law of profit on people who cannot defend themselves. And the question I was, uh, it's a political question. Messages from my mother on my cell phone were political messages. I'm not happy here. So, but a protest, a political protest on my cell phone had only one uh, listener, me. And I, uh, the, the last part of my book is, I wonder um, if she cannot, she, her protest could not uh, get access to the public sphere, to the political sphere. And the, the, the last part of my book is, how can people who are deprived of the right to speak, or the, or the, the very possibility to speak, to protest, how can they, they have their voice heard in the public sphere? And, the only way is that there are some people who uh, uh, um, take the role of the spoke person to make the voice of these people deprived of the right to speak uh, heard in the public sphere. Simone de Beauvoir did that wonderfully mm. in her book uh, uh, 1970. Uh, um, uh, old age, la vieillesse in France, and I, uh, I, I wanted to to take the the the, the uh, or le relais. I don't to prendre le relais. The, to, to, uh, uh, the uh, relation. Uh, no, to to, um, uh, to 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 keep on uh, uh, to, the the gesture that Simone de Beauvoir tried to to do in, in her book and to 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 do exactly the, the same to speak for people who yeah. cannot speak and yeah. uh, so my book is a, an attempt to speak for people namely the 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 elderly uh, who lost their uh, physical and sometimes cognitive autonomy and to to have the, 
to, to in, in order to have their voice uh, in uh, the public sphere, political sphere, and as they cannot protest, they cannot mobilize, they cannot go to uh, to a demonstration, they cannot sign a petition. Uh, someone has to do it for them, and yeah. this is what I, I try to do in my book. Do you, do you think, Didier, that um, after four, 40 years of neoliberalism, uh, everyone takes it for granted that everyone is responsible for their own happiness yeah. or unhappiness, isn't it? It's, it's amazing, you know. There, there was a, a, a French journalist published a book about um, a nursing home in the suburbs of, of Paris, the very, the, one of the richest uh, suburbs. And this, um, to, to get access to this nursing home, families has, has to pay, have to pay 12,000 euros a month. 12,000 euros a month. And this journalist, after one year, an, inv an investigation uh, during one year, so how they, they were um, they suppressed the the orange juice because it's too expensive. They suppressed one cake in the morning. One there will be only one instead of two, because the 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 action the actionaries or the of the the company want to make money on these uh, elderly people, and this. This is so infuriating that, you, that these people cannot uh, 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 fight for their rights. And, and so, um, the, uh, as, you, as you put it, it's, it seems obvious that if you, if you cannot pay, nobody takes care of you. But even if you can pay, if you can pay 12,000 euros a month, uh, you can be... Um, uh, treated in such a bad way that uh, um, there is a, so here is not only a question of class it's also uh, there is a, a category that we have to to take in account which is a question of age um, the, situ the situation of my mother in a, a working class uh, area uh, nursing home and uh, the situation of uh, the nursing room, which is described in this uh, book by a French journalist I've just mentioned, it's, it's not the same class, but it's the same age and the same situation. So uh, we have to consider that we have to fight for, without forgetting, of course, of course the question of class, but uh, we have to fight for um, a category uh, which is not dependent uh, completely on the class background. And yes. so uh, it's taken for granted that um, the, the state does not have to pay for, for the hospital, for the health system, for the, for the, for the um, um, transportation, for uh, and, and, uh, habitation, and so on. And this is, you, you wonder why the far right wing is so strong. And this is why, exactly why, because this is a dismantlement of the public sector, of the, of the welfare state, and people are deprived of everything uh, in the small towns when the hospital, the maternity, everything has been, the, the school, the, the post office, everything has been closed because uh, there is that at the big cities uh, 200 kilometers uh, away. Um, so it's too expensive to have that everywhere. And so people are infuriated, uh, uh, feel completely ignored, deprived of everything. And so they vote for the far right wing. It was exactly what my mother did. Yes. So you say it's not only a class question, it's about the old people. But when we go back to the class background, you, um, you always come back to the class society and the working class and the changing of the working class. And I and you, you describe how this, this this new friend of your mother, how his racism and homophobia and everything. So I came to the question, uh, maybe also the left 
has made a lot of mistakes in romanticizing the working class, but actually didn't know much about these people. You know, how many working class, people with uh, working class extraction are now in the left-wing uh, political parties, at the, at the, uh, in, at, uh, leaders of these uh, uh, in France, not that many, I don't know here, but I, I would assume it's exactly the same. And there was an, an idealization of the working class, the wonderful working class, the red flag, and so on. But the reality is um, uh, you have to, to do sociolog sociological uh, studies and uh, surveys and to, to know who are the people we are dealing with. And it's, it, it, we have to get rid of uh, mythologies. As I said in, uh, in Ricoeur Narens, uh, the, 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 the wonderful uh, revolutionary uh, working class, it's a myth. Uh, and uh, uh, they were left-wing because left-wing parties uh, were defending their interests when the political left-wing parties do not defend anymore their interests, they stop voting left-wing and they, they vote right-wing or f very often far right-wing. And here we have to, to rethink um, the, the, the very idea of, of a social class, of, uh, the very uh, uh, idea of a, a class society. Th there is a class divide, in, of course, in our society, in Germany, in France, in Italy, in Greece, in, in Great Britain. And um, the violence of the, uh, this divide is, is, uh, is everywhere. But we, it's not because there is a, a, work, a, a class divide that there is a social class which is mobilized for a, a, a left-wing agenda, and as we see now. The, when my mother was a factory worker, she used to work in a factory in which there were 1,700 workers, male and female, 1,700, with a big big, big trade union, CGT, which was the communist uh, union at that time, and 500 workers were members of this trade union in the factory in which my mother used to work. And 500 members, plus uh, sympathizers, plus other unions, it was a very, very strong force uh, uh, Included uh, them. Uh, always yeah. ready to uh, mobilize, to go on strike. And my mother went on strike, and she was uh, on the strike were long, massive, violent because the the the, the boss of the, uh, um, on the picket line of uh, the factory one night. Uh, uh, some militia uh, shot to the workers and one was killed. And um, it w and my mother w used to work in that factory at that time. And it, it, it was a really a class struggle at that time. My mother was a member of the working class movement through her participation to these uh, strikes. And um, she was a political subject. But then the factory closed, and so the workers were disseminated in uh, w w what did they become? Uh, unemployed, e being able to find precarious jobs, and their, their sons and daughters, even worse. And also, where are the cards of the communist trade union. If there is no factory, there is no trade union, there is no member card of the trade union, people are isolated, and so the, the only way to protest, um, before they came, they, they, they went on strike, they went to demonstration, after the, after the, the closing of the, of the factory, they can vote for the only party saying we are defending your interest, and unfortunately, it was the ugly party <laughs> with uh, the ugly face of yes. Marine Le Pen, uh, yeah. and, or, uh, 
a young successor uh, who is younger, but he's, uh, uh, he's so ugly. <laughs> he has an ugly fascist face too. And uh, so the transformation of work, uh, people don't work anymore in, in huge mm. factories, but in Amazon warehouses where they cannot go on strike, where they cannot uh, uh, take a card of a, a union, where the condition of work are, yeah. are horrible and they are beeped uh, for every gesture. And so there is a working class. It's the, not, we there, cannot think about a, it there, in, there in, in industrial terms, but there is a working class. There it's only changed. Yeah. There is a working class. Not the one we have in mind, yes, uh, not the, the workers of the 1950s, 1960s. Yes. There is a working class, of course. There yes. is a new working class. That's important, of, of I course. think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You see that in the wonderful movies by Ken Loach, uh, Sorry We Missed You. Oh, and when you see that movie, the working class is the woman of the of the couple is a uh, um, nurse aide, uh, um, uh, uh, someone who, who go who goes from fa from uh, house to house to help uh, elderly or disabled people, and uh, a condition. Uh, I don't know the, the word. Uh, uh, I don't know it in English. It's kind of Pflegedienst. Uh, Ed auxiliaire de vie. Aux uh, someone who helps people to, in their daily life. In their daily life, yeah. yeah. And, and the, the man of the couple is an um, uh, um, Amazon uh, uh, de delivery, uh, working for Amazon and deliver. This is, sorry we missed you. Uh, it's uh, a it's, uh, it's reference to, to Amazon. And you can see how harsh the condition of work are for this new, this is a new working class in Great Britain. There is a working class. Yeah. And of course, they cannot, uh, they can, the only way to defend their rights is to be the member of a trade union, but they, they, they cannot. They can, and there is a new working class. There is a working class, but not a, we have to get rid of our uh, wonderful Australia. representation, yeah. the historical, yes. and uh, the, big manu the big demonstration, and uh, uh, May 68, uh, 10 million of workers on strike. And, uh, it's, uh, I, I do like that. I, I cherish yeah. that. But I, 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 have, I have to, to, to uh, acknowledge that it is, uh, the situation has changed. And um, yeah. it's, if, we, if we don't understand that, for example, we don't understand a m movement like the Yellow Vest movement in France, which were composed it was a com composite and complex movement. It was composed in part by this kind of people, and they were met by uh, uh, riot police sent by uh, uh, Monsieur Macron uh, with uh, rubber bullets, and uh, Andrew had been uh, severely mutilated. And so if you, when people are demonstrating, if you mutilate them instead of listening to them, no wonder that they will vote for the National Front. Yeah, and, and when you wrote, uh, we are at the end already, oh, so, oh, sorry, but um, yeah. we have to remember when you wrote Retour, uh, Retour à Reims, it was uh, 2009, Marine Le Pen was at 12%, and now today she's at over 30, so nothing, nothing everything got worse in between this time. But one last question, and really, really short, Didi, yeah, because the, yeah. uh, the, the other authors, <laughs> authors are standing already there. So have you felt lab, le liberated when your mother died? A really difficult and, and uh, hard question, but was it kind of a liberation for you? Not exactly. Uh, I was very sad, and uh, and I, I started uh, remind, uh, remembering her, her, her life, and I I wanted to pay tribute to her um, in a book which is called uh, "Vie vieillesse et mort d'une femme du peuple." The, the French title: "The Life, Old Age, and Death of a Working Class Woman." The, yes. the title is different I, I just be, be, asked because, because in German, folk with um, a pub, folk would not no, be a very good choice. I, I only asked that, asked that because you, you always write that you are um, stuck to this, to this class uh, origin, and so now everything is, um, yeah. 
It's a book about the working class, yeah. uh, and um, and um, but also a book about women of the working class, yes. and uh, and um, it's a, it's a very feminist book. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank oh. you, Tanya. Um, vielen Dank fürs Zuhören. Das ist das Buch. Um, I don't know if you're going to sit here. Are you still here at a, 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 a few minutes? Also vielleicht können Sie sich das Buch signieren lassen. Ich bin noch nicht ganz sicher. Vielleicht gibt es noch ein paar Minuten. Ja, vielen Dank.